This is an advanced watercolour tutorial. I say advanced mainly because it's an interior scene. Now, interior scenes can be more difficult because they're full of man-made objects. Natural objects like trees and fields can be easier to draw and paint, in my opinion. Uh, we all know what man-made objects look like, so we've got a reference point in our mind, uh, the viewer can judge whether this house or car looks like a convincing house or car. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, and I produce full-length video tutorials with commentary, which will help you improve your watercolour techniques and create some great-looking paintings. So this is what I'm going to paint in this watercolour tutorial. It's the mill at the water mill in Pizzara, Tuscany, Italy. Other challenges we face with an interior scene can be lighting, lighting coming from different directions. So the lighting, here's uh, an entrance, the light is coming in from here. Uh, a couple of windows, light coming in from the right hand side. Also inside, the lighting can be diffused, creating soft shadows and some subtle uh, value changes. Look at the light area there and that slightly darker area going in towards the middle of the mill. We've got perspective to think about as well. Look at this line here, the bottom of the wall, the window sills, lots of tricky perspectives, lots of detail requiring perhaps a bit more time to think about them and draw and paint them. Uh, so we've got in this mill scene some quite complex objects. So there's uh, this hopper here into which grain is poured. Um, we've got um, a millstone, a stationary millstone here. We've got um, a revolving millstone um, just just below the hopper and these screws here um, they use for lowering the vertical uh, drive shaft of the revolving millstone um, into the long horizontal drive shaft powered by the turbine so a lot of complex um, shapes and objects to to think about uh, look at, um, also thinking about objects, look at the wheel at the back of the mill. Um, lots of little objects as well, dustbins, containers, things that we, well, we need to think about you know, how we simplify the scene. What do we include? What do we exclude? Um, so I might simplify some of that. Um, but look at the, the detail, you know, these rivets and bolts on on this supporting um uh, arm here uh, maybe it's too much detail we've got to we've got to think about that uh, colors we want to try and make this as interesting as possible after all we're not copying this photograph uh willy-nilly uh, we're, we're trying we're trying to produce a piece of art that we enjoy making that's that hopefully somebody else will enjoy looking at and gives them a sense, gives them a feeling of, of the place where we are. Um, so we, we, we like to, or I like to, inject a bit of colour into my watercolour paintings just to give um, a bit more emotion to the scene. So I can detect some warms and cools in here, uh, particularly the warm, the warmth of the, the floor here. Um, look at the coolness on the top of the millstone the warm walls, but I can see there's a little bit of cool shadows creeping in there as well, a little bit of blue creeping into some of those shadows. Um, cool down the bottom of this wall as well. So, a tricky scene. Let's see how we get on in this advanced watercolour tutorial. The paper I'm using for this watercolour tutorial is Saunders Waterford. It's cold press, uh, which is the medium texture, so it's not too rough, not too smooth. This is 300 grams in weight or 140 pounds, and it's 15 inches by 11 inches. 
I'll cover the palette I'm using as I start my painting, but the first step is the drawing and getting right the perspective. So I've started with the ceiling and getting right in my own mind these, these key angles to get the perspective correct. It's the left hand window and the entrance door coming in here. Quite a simple shape this one because it's open towards us. By the way, if you wanted to keep my reference photo as I paint the demo, then you could always open up another tab in your browser and go to this same video in that new tab and pause it um, on the opening minutes where I've, where I've shown the, uh, the, my source photograph. Um, or better still, and excuse the plug, why not consider joining my Patreon scheme, uh, www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T, where I share uh, my high resolution source photographs and my finished paintings and provide a critique of your paintings. Now, back to the drawing. So these objects at the end of the mill this low wall coming down towards us, the left-hand side of the wall, and now the right-hand side of the wall. Halfway down, we've got another wall going from left to right, and so I'm having to think about the thickness of that low wall coming towards me. Uh, like the door, simple bit of wall going over to the right hand side of the mill and the window opening. Now I was talking about tricky things on in an interior scene and if you've got round tables or this round millstone we're looking at we're looking at it at an angle so it's like an elliptical shape so perhaps a little bit more difficult to to draw than a, a perfect circle so um, having to think about getting that shape right uh, doesn't matter if I get it wrong I'll get the rubber out start again doesn't matter but it has has to be right I've actually moved the millstone in a little bit from the right. I think to have it a little bit more complete there is, um, from a composition point of view, is nicer. I suppose one thing that you've got that's easier on an interior scene is you can move things around. Um, tables, chairs, objects um, to suit the composition. And that's what I've done with that, that millstone there just to nudge it in a little bit to the left um, might make it a bit more pleasing to the eye. So that was the hopper uh, on top of the revolving millstone. And then that vertical support and a horizontal arm coming over. And there's a, a board going along the beams across the, the ceiling. Quite an interesting shape just to break up the, the horizontal lines of those beams. Now back to back to the wall, this little low wall, and these uh, screws um, which are used for lowering the 
lowering the drive shaft of the um, of that revolving millstone just another little elliptical shape um, but it's too much detail uh, not gonna really pay a lot of attention to that as long as it sort of looks like something an integral part of the mill and it's got some kind of purpose or function in there um, that's that's what I need to make sure right the right hand window and a subtle little arch. I'm using a uh, soft soft pencil here. It, this is a 3B pencil, uh, quite quite a thick um, lead. Uh, I think this is um, three millimeters. So I'm going to get a, a fairly thick line, which just makes sure that when I with watercolour we're laying down we're laying down these transparent washes and I can still um, as much as possible see the, the these guiding lines um, as I as I do my painting. A lot of my watercolour tutorials are of exterior scenes, landscapes, street scenes, seascapes and the the initial drawing for those um, I'm pretty much done by now but because this is an interior scene a little bit more advanced I'm gonna have to spend more time just getting in some of the key objects that I want to to include One of the inspirations for um, doing this scene is uh, an artist, um, sadly departed, an artist called Russell Flint. If you do a Google a Russell Flint, he painted some fantastic watercolours of um, mills and old barns, uh, mainly in France, um, but lovely scenes. Um, with with models in them as well uh, but but they really um, fascinated me as regards um, uh, an unusual subject to to paint uh, not very common and uh, some very some very subtle tones and nice warm tones of these interior barn scenes and when you look closely at them um, a great use of different watercolor techniques as well uh, dry brush and um, yeah, do a Google of Russell Flint. Now, so I've done the drawing. I'm often asked, do you, do you pre-wet your paper? Um, I don't, but this time I am. Uh, I just want to get some softness. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the soft lighting, soft values, um, soft edges in this scene. I want to try and give myself a little bit of assistance here by pre-wetting the paper. So I've got out a, a flat brush or a hate brush and very softly, I don't want to damage the surface. So very softly pick up some clear water and go over the entire surface here. I've got a good, I've got fairly good quality masking tape. It's not, um, it's not pulling off with this water, but covering the whole scene equally and I'm constantly looking at it against the light just to make sure um, it's got that sort of shiny uh, that equal shininess across the whole surface before uh, before starting to to paint also with good quality watercolor paper like Saunders Waterford that that laying down of water it's sort of absorbed quite nicely into the paper and it's going to uh, depending on your the the humidity of where you're painting it's going to stay damp quite a long time so i've got a good a good amount of time to to do my painting and get and get in the the soft uh, the soft edges i want to do so giving me a bit more time whereas with um, 
with paper that's not cotton based, they can dry out too quickly. Or if you're working in very, very dry conditions or a very warm, and or a very warm, warm room, um, then time isn't going to be on your side. You've got to work really quickly. So paper still damp. And I'm now going in with the wash stage where I'm primarily painting over the whole painting with these subtle variations of warms and cools. Some of this, some of this won't be painted again. Um, like the lighter areas, that will be it. Uh, so uh, I've got to get them, them right. And, and with watercolour, things dry lighter. So you've got to have a little bit of a practice over uh, getting the values right and maybe over compensating, uh, going a bit darker than you, than you might think. I do see a lot of beginners paintings where they are too too light and uh, they don't they don't have that sort of impact you want to try and create a little bit of um, emotion and, and impact with the with the painting and uh, one way of doing that is with these the different values so I've, I've also started at the top of the painting I've got a slight angle on this board maybe about 10 degrees so not too much but it's enough to have gravity bring the paint gradually down the scene over on the left hand side i've gone it's almost quite a, a golden touch to it um coming down to now a bit of coolness That's, um, I think it's a fridge or something. Um, the mill owners might correct me on that, but I think it's a fridge, but it's just an object, just a square thing. And uh, um, quite nice that it it's sort of just in front of the door. I think it's quite nicely placed from a composition point of view, um, just so that uh, just to, it makes it a little bit more interesting in that in that doorway entrance. So back on the right hand side, I've done the top of the millstone, which you can still just about see. So cool top, let's go a little bit, a little bit warmer down in the bottom right corner. So I really am doing quite a lot of mixing here. Um, I should say my, my palette from the top, for those of you that haven't seen my previous videos up on YouTube from the top, we've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, pretty much in the middle, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Alizarin Aliz Crimson, I always have difficulty saying that word, Alizarin Crimson, and then a bright red, it used to be cadmium red, I use a Windsor red now, which is pretty identical to um, like a sort of a bright red, a scarlet red, or, or what cadmium red, I've uh, stopped using cadmium red, uh, the Windsor red, quite a nice alternative, then three up from the bottom, I've got light red, cadmium orange and a lemon yellow. Now this doorway, I'm lifting off here, another watercolor technique, lifting off the brush I'm using is a mop brush, nice soft hairs. It's been, it's a damp brush, so it's not totally dry. You can see the, the hairs there um, are splaying out a little bit, uh, keeping together because the brush is quite, quite damp, but it's, it's not, so damp that I can't lift off the colour. So um, if you like, I've I've squeezed out my, my brush. I've dipped in my watercolour, but I've dipped in my water container, my water reservoir, 
and I just squeezed out that brush or uh, placed the brush onto a sponge, a damp sponge, just to suck out the excess moisture so that I am able to lift off some of this um, paint here. I don't often do lifting off of um, lifting off with a brush. I do a little bit with with a paper towel or a tissue. Uh, never a sponge. Um, always a, a bit of uh, paper towel. Just uh, you've got to be careful with the lifting off that um, you don't go overboard as with any um, technique. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, but yeah, so different ways of lifting off with a, with a damp brush and with a paper towel. So I could have used a paper towel. I reckon a paper towel is going to suck up more of the paint than a damp brush. So damp brush is going to be a little bit more gentle with that lifting off. And you can be a little bit more precise, more controlled with that lifting off procedure. Um, whereas with with a crunched up paper towel, it's sometimes a little bit hit and miss. Great for going back to what I was saying about natural objects like a tree or a, a field or um, the sea. You know, I could could use a, a paper towel there there where it, it will give more of a sort of random um, a random sort of lifting off effect. Whereas if I want to be more controlled, definitely go for a brush. The paper is still damp. Um, I'm now going in with some darker colors and a thicker, a thicker consistency of paint. So there's less water on my brush. I'm using still a mop brush here. A mop brush has got a good edge to it because I need to be quite precise when I'm going up to some of these, these objects. You can see there, that dark line there, a little bit of glistening against the light. Everything is still quite damp. Okay, so I've got uh, using good quality watercolor paper. It is, I've got a length of time to keep things going. Talking about damping your or wetting your paper before you start, I have seen some artists that uh, soak the paper completely. Um, maybe in a bath or a sink and then drain it and then put it onto a board and start start painting um, with or without having done an initial drawing but actually painting onto so that so that the, the this damp paper is sort of stuck to your your board or um, you know, plastic board or, or something like that um, so it's stuck there but it's it's quite a flat surface and it's quite an interesting way of 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 painting this. So I I could have done that actually. I could have um, without using that masking tip. I could have just done the drawing, dip the paper in uh, in some bath or a sink, and leave it there for maybe a minute, and then uh, pick it up, drain off the excess moisture. Uh, lay it on my on my board and off I went or off I off I go so uh, it would be a similar a similar sort of thing in watercolor in the in this advanced uh, watercolor tutorial I'm also trying to think about values and I think um, in my painting here always trying to decide where is where are the dark areas where's where's the darkest area of the scene where is the lightest area of the scene and try and have those fairly close together so in my mind the darkness was in the top left hand corner of the room just above that open door and that door with the light shining on it that's probably one of the lightest areas and a little shard of light coming across the floor um, from the doorway entrance that would be quite light there so 
let's get some darks into into that area and i will i'll use a neutral tint some people frown on neutral tint or a lot of people don't even know know what it is uh i, I suppose it's a bit like Payne's gray Payne's gray in in my mind is a, a little bit like a, a bluish gray but neutral tint is as the word suggests neutral and uh, invariably i will add it to another color so it's not a pure gray uh, i don't want to um, have this painting looking too dull i want to try and introduce some other colors into uh, into that neutral tint a little bit more lifting off here It's surprising with uh, with paper, with painting on damp paper, and and also calm paper, the the paint moves ever so gently, and I've got to keep uh, my eye on things. So uh, that doorway, for example, I don't want the the dark uh, paint to unnecessarily creep over the dark paint around the door unnecessarily creep over the door. I want to try and keep uh, a fairly hard edge there. Okay. Um, so just keeping my eye on that and lifting it off, lifting it off as necessary. So as I say, I'm not um, introducing too much water into this. Uh, fairly fairly thick um paint now that's this is the this is the dark area around the upper revolving millstone and uh the dark values on the left hand side of that millstone that upper millstone so putting that putting a little bit of darkness there what I'm doing there, that's immediately giving some kind of context, some kind of shape to that upper millstone. Um, going back to what I said with, with the lighting, uh, you, you, you've got to, with some of these interior scenes where light's coming in from the left, light's coming in from the right, light might be coming in from, from above, from an a artificial light or something, you got to take time to observe the scene and just get right in your mind your your approach your plan for for this lighting i'm painting now this middle dividing wall it's uh it's sort of like some timber slats some vert some uh, horizontal timber slats and getting in a hardish edge around the top of this lower stationary millstone down to the bottom of the dividing wall up against the left hand side of the of that millstone that bottom millstone putting some darker darker paint on the right hand side of the wall that's going to give some definition to the wall uh, now this hopper this is where all the grain gets fed into um, it gets poured into that and it slowly feeds into the center of the revolving millstone you see you're getting a you're getting a lesson on the objects in a millstone here as well as it being a painting tutorial um, all these little parts it's it's interesting to know the you know these mills and and uh, all the bits and pieces that that uh, 
this is this isn't a working well anymore it's been very well restored by the owners and uh, it was really interesting to to see how things were were done and are still done in uh, some some working mills around the world now left of this right hand window to the left to the left of the right hand window quite cool in here um that so adding a bit of blue it will the paper's still damp it's it is going to move a little bit more um so might quite might appear quite blue there but it actually is going to go it's going to dull down a little bit now as per the top of the me creating the the edge as i'm doing here the top of the millstone i'm going to likewise be quite careful with the bottom are uh, the 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 edge nearest to us now going quite dark i might need to lift off some of this it's going quite dark just below the window sill down below the window the base of the millstone i picked up some clear water there just to get in this is the bottom right hand corner i don't want to have too much detail in there so just i'll just leave things up to the viewer to interpret what might be going on there um, now the shadow coming from the stationary millstone hard edge continue along the base and use my finger to smudge things in a little damp area there and with a damp brush just lift off things a little bit I picked up a bit of green there I just just detected a little bit of green in the upper part of that window opening so I, so I'm trying to introduce what you might think is a quite a dull a dull scene uh, I'm trying to introduce a few interesting colors, compatible colors to make it a little bit more interesting. At the back of the mill, there are a few objects, uh, a dustbin, a sort of galvanized dustbin. I'm not gonna to attempt to make that look metallic just trying to keep things um, fairly harmonious with each other but it's some kind of cylindrical shape there are a couple of cylindrical shapes and then i got that that wheel as well to contend with so i am having to constantly quite easy here but this paper size isn't isn't huge it's not a large piece of paper but it's it's small enough so that i can manage things and keep everything down but if i was painting on a larger scale it would be a lot more difficult uh to to going back to keeping the paper damp so i can keep working at things and um, applying as time goes on applying thicker paint into into that scene bit of light between the right hand side of that upper revolving millstone and the wall again a bit of darkness 
on the right hand side of the wall, which will make that appear a little bit lighter. You have to be careful with the the application of paint here as the paper's drying. There will come a time when the paint the, the paint is a little bit too dry for me to be going in with more paint on top and we get then some undesirable effects and the painting can become potentially could come a little bit too muddy and uh, brush marks it may not be appearing in the intended way. So you, you, timing is of the essence in watercolour and uh, keep observing that watercolour surface and the say, depending on the, the sort of paper you're using, that would dictate how long you've got to work at this. So as it does, as the paint does get drier, I will then use different uh, watercolor techniques to to add in the dark. So be there, there could be some dry brush marks, for example. So where there's very little water on the brush, and I'm using um, uh, almost pure paint, pure pigment to drag the brush over a rough textured surface to to give a uh, a slightly sort of deckled um, approach to it. That top left corner needs to be darker still. I will put the beams in as a later stage. They could be quite those beams could be quite difficult as well to get again the perspective right with with these receding beams going into the distance and the thickness of those beams um, so that that will require a little bit of prior thought as regards how I how I tackle that don't be afraid to use the fingertips Most of the time when I'm painting, when I finish the painting, I look at my fingertips and they've all got various colors on the ends of them. Uh, you, you, you could use a, a soft brush, maybe a, a soft dryish brush to, to do the same thing. I, I just prefer um, just to, to use the fingertips. But again, just conscious of don't damage the surface, don't rub it too much because um, any any watercolor paper uh, will eventually succumb to to being prodded and um, stabbed at, and you just got to be a bit careful to uh, not disturb the surface um, too much. Keep it keep it fresh as well. That's the left hand side of the hopper. And the rim of that revolving millstone. We we can just about detect now that it's starting to look like the inside of a building. We can see these shapes gradually taking place and their form appearing. That's, so I've just painted around the uh, screw there, that little wheel, that screw, which um, lowers the vertical 
drive shaft of the uh, of the millstone. Good thing about these old mill buildings, or any doing any mill, any any uh, sort of old building, are the the texture of the walls and with watercolor, with different techniques, bit of splattering, for example, onto a damp wash, uh, adding in different different consistencies of paint. We can begin to get begin to create the effect of the the texture of the walls and the flagstones on the on the floor uh, just to, to give the impression of um, the the age of the building there's some kind of a, a couple of boxes on the wall or frames I'm just going to so I've painted around one of them there we'll need to go in a little bit darker around it and I'm using here, there, I'm using some dry brush strokes. So the paper is very dry. It's dried up there in that middle portion. So I'm having to use these dry brush strokes, which doesn't matter with, 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 uh, with, with these old, old walls. Uh, that's going to give this, this texture. If you look at, if you look at Russell Flint, and some of the techniques he used for rendering the old buildings. Uh, he, he did the same thing, I'm pretty sure, dry brush, dry brush strokes. It's a, a shame that YouTube wasn't around in, in his era because it would be fascinating to see uh, some of the great artists that have sadly departed and, and seeing their, their techniques. Dry brush stroke, another one there. Not, not completely horizontal. We're at a, again with with these old buildings, we want we don't want things too perfect and um, too too horizontal. So slight slight angle, left to right. Now I am using my paper towel here to to do some lifting out where I do want to get a bit more, um, use something that's a bit more absorbent to lift off the, lift off that uh, paint of this light coming across, the light coming across the, uh, the floor there. Top right corner of the door is slightly darker Paper is drying, the paper is drying in that area as well. Again, because I, because I did some lifting off, that's going to dry a little bit quicker. So uh, I used um, so a bit of dry brush, a bit of soft, soft brush, dry brush, just dragging it from the top right corner of that door into the center, just to uh, get a little bit of darkness up there. It, it gives the impression of the light hitting the lower part of the door. The brushes I'm using are Raphael brushes, uh, soft aqua, so it's a synthetic brush. Quite good actually for using using a brush like that for these interior scenes where I'm constantly having to to go on top of things and um, applying this thicker paint. There are there are similar brushes, Skoda, Princeton. Oh, there's loads of them that that do um, some very good um, synthetic synthetic brushes. Now this smaller brush, this is what I will use to add in some more detail here. 
the paper is drying quite nicely. It's still a little bit damp in places. And I'll be able to detect that as I'm painting now into those areas. I can see whether the, the paint is, is soaking in or whether it just sort of rests on the surface. Um, but um, I'm using a smaller brush to get in these details. So some horizontal lines across the, the doorway. Some dark valleys between those objects at the back of the mill and then over to the middle low wall. Something just beyond the fridge, don't know what it is, but it's sort of, it's sort of in the middle of the scene. We don't want to um, do anything too detailed unless it's a focal point, unless it's some, some sort of sort of a key element of the painting. Um, but I do want to use this brush just to give the impression of the textures of different objects, help me paint in lines that will assist the perspective of the scene. There are um, these lines going up the left hand side or along the the floor to that fridge. Some lines here on the side of the window. Some of these lines will also not be continuous lines. They will, they will have some breaks in them or lost and found, uh, as they say. So not continuous lines. Some little little gaps in them. Even at this stage, if I if I think um, with with this detail brush, I think uh, I've I've added a line in or a mark, and I don't. I look at it and I think, oh, I, I guess subconsciously I'm just thinking, does it look right? If it doesn't, just quickly use the finger, lift it off. Uh, it's surprising how well uh, you can just easily lift off things, almost make it, just make it invisible um, and start again. So do that before it's dried up too much and then it comes. It, it can become more of a challenge just to to change things. These two objects are the back of the building, I'm not sure what they are on the wall there. Uh, I need to add a bit more definition around those. This hopper, there are some horizontal lines on the hopper, so I'm just using some dark dry brush marks to, to create that. We'll need to go a bit darker on that right hand right hand top right hand corner of that hopper you see at the top of my mixing wells I generally mix the darks so I've got three main mixing wells I generally use use the top one for the darks uh, in that top mixing well that's the little little thumb hole that I never actually use this for plain air painting uh, so um, but I can I can be mixing colour on top of that. So generally I'm mixing the darks up there. And with it with a small brush, I'm I'm picking up neutral tint, maybe a bit of burnt umber, alloys and crimson, perhaps a bit of ultramarine blue, 
just so that uh, it's not uh, it's not always that um, that neutral tint. Although I do want to get quite dark in places. The uh, just smudged out some of those lines. They're, they're too they're too hard those edges. So just smudge them a bit to to soften them. I think if I had a, if I had a clear water on those on those lines on a hard edge, it just might get a bit messy. Um, so I don't want to introduce more. Don't want to introduce more water to the scene. I want to keep it fairly dry, and uh, that's why I use my finger just to. To smudge them out. Behind the hopper is another window on the right hand side so it's further back I don't want to paint that in too much it's just an opening just something a little bit more interesting a bit of light behind it a darker a darker object that hopper I'm almost drawing with the the brush here and there just with that, that darker area behind the revolving millstone, I've, I've created some definition to the, the left hand side. This is the back of the mill, so because it's further away, I don't want to overcomplicate things, keep it quite simple. Just a few brush marks to give the impression of something going on there. Now, this wheel, almost in the middle of the scene, I'm going to change it slightly from the actual wheel in the photograph. It had a sort of quirky spokes to it, but I'm, I'm keeping this quite simple. More of a traditional, like a little cartwheel or something. So a bit of negative painting around the spokes. A bit of darkness around the rim of the wheel. The flag, the flagstone is on the floor. What I'm doing now is creating a few lines to help with the perspective. And these again aren't continuous lines, but some lines going across the scene and up and down to give the impression of the flooring at the intersections, maybe a little bit more paint just to give the impression of a, a gap in there, here and there. Of course, a door handle would be useful on a door. Mustn't forget that. Smudged the front of the door, it was just getting a bit 
to sharp that line. The, the top of the millstone has uh, a circular raised bit to it that I did draw in. Uh, I've got to be quite careful here not to ruin things with um, the placement of that. It's got to be sort of in the middle and a little bit of a shadow that the light is coming from that right hand window. So just a little bit of a shadow going over to the left um, and then perhaps even more difficult a, a recess within this bit in the middle which I didn't draw in but I'm just painting in now freehand with this small brush with quite thick paint not too much water on the brush it might just leave little bits of the paper showing through but hopefully that that looks like the top of that millstone and some lines some lines around it another dry brush mark below the below the, the, the surface of the millstone and the base of the millstone as well. Bit of light red neutral tint give me a sort of brownish color for the window frame which is very loosely briefly applied a few dry brush marks and it's it's on the side of the picture, so I don't want to spend too much time elaborating on any of the detail there. My main focus is leading the eye up from the, the, the bottom of the picture, leading the eye up to maybe it hits that wheel and then we see the open door and then the eye might go over to go over to the hopper and then back down the right hand side. So we, we, we've got a little bit of a journey going on through through the painting these are some vertical if I could call it that a vertical support to this middle wall this timber wall with the these slats going across a few slats There is another wheel, another little uh, screw halfway up the, uh, the wall, which I'm not bothering about. It's just a line. Uh, this is the, the nearby screw, but it's foreground. So I, I could have put more detail in quite a nice, might have been quite a nice shape that's a nice object that's repeated in several areas around around the sea well particularly the the wheel at the back of the the mill you know it would have been um, another little object sort of replicating that from an artistic point of view 
but I've, I've kept it's quite simple quite simple I might get a bit of highlight on it uh, when I come to towards the end I will use white paint just to pick up on just a few little details of the painting just to add a bit of extra sparkle to to those In preparation for doing the ceiling, I've just dragged the brush down a few, a few verticals, back down to this wall, the uh, the frame around the window. It's going to be beam time now and for this I've changed my brush I'm going to a quill mop brush which has got natural hairs uh, I think it's a squirrel a squirrel mop but it's got it gets a nice edge to it and when I'm going over a long line I'm going to get it's going to be well behaved and uh, it's, it's just going to be easier to to control a, a nice line it gets a nice edge um, so I want to do some fairly fresh some fairly fresh horizontal lines for these beams and think about perspective as well. I've only got one chance at this with watercolour. We've only got one chance and if we make a mistake, well, that can be it sometimes. Well, sometimes we can make mistakes into something else. Uh, so I'm, I'm spending a lot of time here working with the brush, making sure I've got the right kind of uh, moisture, the right kind of uh, um, wetness and very carefully starting at the back. There's my first line. And like the floor, it's not, it's not completely horizontal. We've got a slight slope left to right. So I suppose it's a bit like golf here. I'm just sort of eyeing up the ball and just doing a few practice marks. But I've, in my mind, I, I've sort of Im imagined myself doing these lines. There's the second one. So I'm going over it once. I'm not uh, unnecessarily labouring. Keep keep checking that edge. That ed I need I need that nice edge of the brush. And trying to get a bit thicker as I'm coming towards me, a bit more of a gap between these lines as well. These are old beams, it doesn't matter if it's a continuous line. I need to uh, have a little bit of a gap there because of that board that's on the... I'm not sure what that board does, but it's there's a board um, coming towards us uh, attached to these beams. This colour is a combination of um, that neutral tint, burnt sienna, a bit of burnt umber. Keep checking that edge. Slowly drag the brush left to right and over to the right hand side. So this is capping, this is putting a, a top on the scene. It's beginning to look more like an interior scene now. So it's gradually coming together. I'm 
bit of ultramarine blue. It might need another another line or two. So I'm actually on top of the masking tape here. You can see the way I had added a bit more pressure on the brush and so I'm going to get a wider line, a wider line there by pressing it down on the paper a bit more. So I painted around the paint around that board. That board looks a little bit more like a board now. There are some things dangling in the middle. Back to small brush. Go a bit darker in the, the top left corner of the room. And around the those objects on the wall. Not too much water on the brush. This vertical support and a horizontal arm coming out, going over to the wall, 45 degree angle on there. I've not made too much, not made too much of this. That bit of darkness there is, is going up to the post. So that that vertical support, I started dark at the top, but then did a bit of negative painting down towards the bottom. That's the that cylindrical object at the back. Just a few verticals. And a bit more of a line defining the top of the millstone at this stage I'm just with this small brush almost dancing around the scene and just just adding in little details that I see fit of course the the big question is knowing when to finish. Very difficult to decide that and does come does come with practice. But I suppose it's a law of D 
decreasing returns, the more the more things you you start adding to the painting, it's bringing less to it, and it comes to a point where the more things you add in, you're going in a negative direction, and it then becomes overworked or too fussy, too much detail, detail in the wrong place. So uh, I I I get it wrong. I sometimes don't stop when I should do and uh, you, you just you just learn you get to with it with experience and practicing it enough times you you just begin to get a better better feeling for when to stop the, the painting Don't want to put too many the base of the wall i don't want to put too much uh, of a dark line down there to form the base it's just, it's just sort of blending in with the wall uh, blending in with the floor um so they're 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 sort of connected There's almost hardly any paint sometimes on my brush here. I just want some very faint lines appearing. Neutral tint and ultramarine blue this square this rectangular object behind the door and In the on the left hand side of those beams, I needed to make them a little bit more connected to the wall, so I've just added a few marks there. So I'm really now thinking about any extra things I might need to do. But when I get out the white paint, that's towards the end of the of the process, and just just here and there, picking out a few a few details. So I've used a small brush here, the same small brush I use for the detail just picking up with some pure white paint right out of the tube not mixed um very rarely mixed with any water and uh just applying that to certain places on the scene just the underside of this line perhaps that's picking up a bit of light coming up from the the floor the middle of that millstone a couple couple of little dots 
on the right of the millstone, some light catching that uh, that vertical post there. This board, this uh, funny board attached to the ceiling, I just uh, just needed a bit more work doing to that. Bit of darkness in the top right corner coming down to the horizontal arm This is my end painting of my advanced watercolor tutorial of this interior mill. So I explained that it, it was an advanced type of tutorial because it's quite a complex interior scene in this mill. Lots of tricky things to contend with. Um, the lighting coming from different directions. Uh, from the, the open window, from the, the doorway in particular, and over the right-hand side of the windows, the, the, with the windows on the right-hand side, the light coming in from the right. Some tricky perspective to deal with as well. Um, the top of the walls, left and right, going into the scene. Um, the base of the walls as well, this lower wall, the right-hand side. Um, difficult shapes, the elliptical shapes of the millstone. Uh, obviously we can see more of this surface than the, the, furthest, um, the furthest millstone there. Uh, so it's a little bit, little bit sort of shallower in nature. And then that circular wheel at the end, uh, lots of different objects to think about. Simplification, trying to reduce the scene reduce some of the complexity, particularly in the distance. So, you know, the rivets on that, on that um, vertical support and, and a lot of the things going on there in the background just to simplify those um, completely. And then think about colors, think about warms and cools. So um, the, the, this warm area here, the warm area on the, the, the side of the window cools with the, uh, the back of the building and the, the right hand side, down the left hand side here on the, on the floor, a bit of coolness on the top of the, the millstone and then up against a bit of aloes and crimson, uh, quite a nice sort of pink there um, going on within that wall. So hopefully catch up with you on Patreon. Look forward to getting your comments as well. If you've got any questions about this, please put them into the um, comments at the bottom. I'd be happy to answer any questions you've got about the video. Catch up with you next time.